Welcome back to another episode to Road to Abundance, guys. Today, I have a special guest. It's one of my friends. I met him actually, I think, five years ago, four years ago. Uh, Aaron Baya. Um, he's a coach. He's spiritual. He's an entrepreneur. He has businesses, tattoo shop. He does a lot of different things. Um, and I met this special human being in Bali. Uh, I think it's the Istana, right? Uh, the spa? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Um, Shout out to Istana. Yeah, man, it was like my favorite spot in Bali. Like it was so amazing, guys. And I met so many cool people like like Aaron there. And uh obviously he has a pretty unique look. Look, if you're watching on YouTube, this guy's fully tatted up and he just came yeah, to me. I'm I'm pretty tatted up too. He's like, bro, I love you, I love your tattoo. I'm like, fuck, that's cool, bro. Look at the neck and this. And we started vibing uh ego aside and just connecting, man. And since that day, I've been following him on social media and we do kind of very similar work. We're very aligned. So, bro, man, thanks for coming on the podcast. I appreciate that, bro. Thanks for the wonderful uh, introduction. It was so cool to meet you. I remember when I met you and I was like, damn, this guy's jacked. (laughs) 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 It's cool to see other homies that, you know, are just doing it and out there alive, making things work, making making progress in their inner game and then helping other people along the way. That's I love that. I love seeing it, bro. Thank you. Yeah, man. I, I lost a little bit of weight since then. Different purpose, different <laughs> goals, but uh, way more spiritual and way happier than ever. So <clears throat> tell us a little bit, bro, your your story, like um, from like your story. And I want to hear like your experience. How did you end up in business? And uh, then we'll go to your very recent experience. So absolutely. Let's roll. Yeah. Happy to, bro. So I grew up in Vancouver, Canada, in East Van. It was a bit of a rougher area. It, it, I grew up the fat kid. I had brass, like braces and glasses and asthma. I was the slowest runner in my grade. Like I wasn't killing it. I wasn't killing it at all. You know, I was bullied. Oh, yeah. It sucked. And I wanted to be cool. And in my area, a whole bunch of people became drug dealers. It's really easy to be a drug dealer in Canada. In Vancouver, sorry. It's very, very prevalent. And I just wanted to be cool. I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to get picked on. You know, I became a fighter. I was kickboxing. I was selling drugs. I lived a chaotic life in those times because I didn't know how to be like a proper man with integrity and live an honorable life. I just was like, I want money. I want to be cool. I want girls. I want power. I want money. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I was living firmly from the ego space, right? Wanting, craving, all that stuff. And then I went through a, it got, it got really addicted to the drugs I was selling. And, you know, Biggie says, don't get high on your own supply. Smart call. <laughs> he said that for a reason. <laughs> Ten crack commandments. That's a good one. I should have yeah. followed that, but I'm glad I didn't because <laughs> then I wouldn't have gone on this crazy journey and, yeah. you know, went on a deep path of, of spirituality, spiritual journeying because I wanted to be happy and I wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, I just had cash and that doesn't make you happy. And I went mm-hmm. down the path of some plant medicines. I did Iboga. I did all every plant medicine I could think of, but really was helping was connecting to a deeper sense of myself. I went to the yogic path. I did a bunch of yoga teacher trainings, like nine or 10 meditation retreats, I developed my own practice, a bunch of tantra stuff, just to learn about me and myself. And the time in Bali, when I moved to Bali, I started my life over February 20th, 2016. The flight out was crazy. I almost didn't make it. Police oh, were there man. at the gate <laughs> about searching me before leaving. It was wild. That's a, that's a whole story, the airport story. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> that's a whole thing. And uh, so I, I was... I went and did hippie life. I went from drug dealer to yogi and it was crazy. Like I finally was able to kick, you know, the addiction to drugs when I found a deeper connection to myself, spirituality, love, positivity. And then I started launching businesses in Bali because I was an entrepreneur back then, just in a different sense of the way. And now it was like, okay, there's actually transferable skills from, you know, crazy shit we did when we were a bit lost. Actually, there's gold in that. So let's find it. And I started... My first business was an Airbnb bed and breakfast in Bali. And I realized I don't give a shit about bed or breakfast. It's like, what am I I doing this? There's people like, there's a, there's a gecko in my room. And I'm like, it's Bali, bitch. Like, come on. Oh my God. Yes. This is, this isn't it for me. Let's do uh, tattoos because I love tattoos. Tattoos are a big thing in my, in my, in my neighborhood. And then I switched my relationship to tattoos to be more about consciousness and, and love and positivity and just, okay, shift it. And, um, softening or into that and so then i opened my first tattoo shop conscious arts tattoo shop it's still open we fund a school for mentally disabled balinese children at that school still since we opened yeah that was a vibe 
And then I opened Karma House. That was the next project where it was like a, a there's a yoga studio upstairs. We used it for dance. We rented out and rented out to people with workshops. Had a restaurant. The restaurant was a massive headache, but the tattoos were crushing it. So we mainly do tattoos still and the event space. And um, that we do a lot of charity work with that in the community. And then um, then we opened Yogi Lab, an online personal development uh, company. We're helping everybody meditate around the world. And then there was Lighthouse um, that we're doing content creators. Anybody who creates content in Bali, they can come through and film their podcasts or their, their, their courses, their classes and start coaching. But when I first started coaching, you know, uh, Corona hit and it, all my businesses that were like assets turned into liabilities is like rent still paid. No, no money coming <laughs> in. Yeah. Airports shut down. Everybody's freaking out around the whole world. you being a big shot Bali entrepreneur, no, no, no. Your bank account is getting drained and your ego is getting drained and is humbling. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, and I was driving around on motorcycles and I was dating around, just trying to fill the hole. Like I was chasing because I didn't feel like this purpose anymore. I felt a bit lost. Mm -hmm. And that was hard on the ego, man. I was just like, damn, who am I if I'm not successful? Yeah. And, uh, and it was, it was a big ego shift a challenge again. It was like, Oh wow, I made it out of the drug game. And then I'm a Bali businessman. Great. And then now we're fucked because Corona and it was this wave yeah. of life. And so I started coaching and helping people like shift their practices, get into business, get into like serving themselves in society and becoming like whole humans again and mm -hmm. like getting get their lives together. And then, thriving and being assets to the community and i was like that's really juicy it's fun then i got hit by a truck <laughs> i was on the highway <laughs> literally <laughs> not, not like literally literally, literally. In Bali. we know it In happened Bali. oh my god oh man i broke both my legs my pelvis my elbow my achilles my bladder some guy cut me off on the highway and i was on my ducati smoked them doing 80 kilometers maybe 90 and i was awake the whole time and a uh, bone sticking out of my body. Uh, it was it was rowdy. And thank God for my practice, you know, for meditation, for breathing, for for you know, presence, to be able to breathe through that. And then I learned Indonesian because I was living out there for a while and was able to get myself help and you know keep myself calm. And it was the practice of developing you know your center yourself. <clears throat> Martial arts, of course, helped because I was able to just like like get it done and yeah. that that was just the craziest ego death experiment for me because you know i went from being a boss and you know have a bunch of people working for me to i can't take a shit by myself i cannot get up so bad you <laughs> <wanna wipe me? laughs> I, I literally had to ring a bell so a I team of nurses shit. yeah they would come and wipe me and it was oh. so it was crazy oh, bro. for the ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so. it's insane, man. And and we'll get into your story because um, mm -hmm. it's 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 gonna be a, a juicy one. So I want to get yeah. there. It's so funny because we have very similar background coming from Montreal, Canada, drug dealer, doing my shit. Uh, I also did MMA and all that stuff. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a fighter. I do it. I was doing it to get rid of the rage. So mm -hmm. if for me, boxing, MMA and all that stuff, punching in a bag was better than punching people. So, absolutely. Um, and you realize that you're doing all that shit for ego. And then I also got a big motorcycle accident at 19. Uh, I think mm -hmm. the major difference is I never got addicted to the drug <laughs> and yeah. I had two friends dying from overdose to show me not Good. to. And uh, it was just crazy, crazy thing. And I, I know for a fact, I got blessed by my motorcycle accident in terms of it. I didn't break anything. 260 on the highway. I got hijacked from my bike. I flipped. I did like, bro, it was insane. And I stood back up and I was like, oh, I was third degree burn. I had a few things, but the doctor was like, bro, how are you not dead? I'm like, yeah, I don't know, bro. It was in my time, but it was a lesson because life <clears throat> will teach you two way with love and with hurt. And the, the thing is like, Matthias De Stefano, I was I was laughing because when you said I got hit by a truck, because Matthias De Stefano is like, oh, it's like if you're on the wrong path, life is gonna do thing, and at some point you're gonna get hit by a truck. And he says it metaphorically, like yeah. as <laughs> life is gonna give you a such a big lesson that is gonna hit like a truck. But you, you literally got hit by a truck, and it was probably, and I'll let you say it, but probably the the greatest experience for you, especially it's very humbling because you're hot, you're an athlete. 
you're good looking dude you're a boss and you end up like being like a little bitch that can't take a shit so it's like wow yeah it's crazy for the ego like i was like i didn't know if i'd ever walk again like the doctor's like you know i could have lost a leg like it was bad Mm -hmm. and uh, you're going through all these surgeries and you don't know what's gonna happen in bali in bali healthcare's a it, God bless the Bali uh, doctors and nurses and team, but it's like a C plus. Like I was micromanaging them to like, you know, oh. would be more efficient, <laughs> you know, and like helping them because they were like, I did one way. week, bro. I almost died in Bali. I did one week and I was like, oh my God. And yeah, Singapore yeah, yeah. as the best hospital yep. in the world, you just need insurance because it's very expensive. It's super expensive. Oh, I would have been down a quarter, quarter mil if I hadn't had insurance. It was yeah, crazy. And, and, yeah. <clears throat> So tell us like kind of like your emotion roller coaster that went through your mind and like were you in the mentality victim? Why does this happen to me? Like am I gonna like tell me what did it teach you and your your roller coaster of like mm. self pity and victimization up to fuck that was so good. Yeah, that was a funny process. It was crazy. I mean, not at the start, it wasn't funny. But when they peeled me off the pavement, which was excruciating and put me on a plastic like stretcher thing, excruciating, put me into the into the ambulance. I'm in severe shock, of course. And I didn't know, but I had an artery in my leg. So I was bleeding out. And and that's how I almost died, actually. And um, I looked at the ambulance ceiling. And I was just like, okay, like, okay, I deserve this. <laughs> like, I just, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know where, or how or what, but like, this is my karma. This is what happened. This is what I brought upon myself. And I laughed a little bit in between the most extreme pain I've ever felt in my life it was like, I was kind of calling in to slow down. Like I was rushing between my businesses. You know, I was like dating Instagram models. Like I was a my bit man. lost. No, <laughs> like you know no knock on the only fans girls but I they weren't it, I you know there. it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't my highest form of what i want in my life you know i wasn't calling in my queen and so it was like i was just and i knew it but i was still doing it you know and i was like you know taking photos on my ducati like yeah look at me you know i, I was just calling it i was asking for it it was like i was yeah. asking the universe like here's some humble pie but it was a humble truck and so i was like you know I accepted it as soon as it happened. Like, okay, this is what it is. And I really thought, I'm like, I could be in a wheelchair. I thought I broke my back, honestly, because my pelvis shifted like that, right? So I had extreme pain in my lower back. I thought I broke my back. And I was like, oh my God, if I'm in a wheelchair the rest of my life, I'm just like- It's going to be, oh my God. That's 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 what it is. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. I was just like, that's, I accepted it. Um, And so then I get into the, into the hospital and they are just like, it's intense, you know? And I was just like, wow this, this is really difficult. And I had been using opiates when I was an addict. And now they're like, we're going to give you fentanyl. Exactly what I was addicted to fentanyl. And I was like, Oh, Oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This karma. I'm meant to now get the drugs given to me. IV that I was addicted to seven years ago. Interesting. Okay. This is an interesting process. I can see what's going on in this higher game, go through the surgeries. But first they put me into the, um, CT scan tube, but to transfer me is extremely, extremely painful. I'm bleeding everywhere, by the way. Like there's a lot of blood and they're not like really like stop. They're just putting like things to try to stop it, but they needed to put me into surgery to stitch up this artery, the perennial artery on my right leg. But they need to do a brain scan before. That's what you're saying. Like they put you in the tube, that circle. Yes. CT scan, which was their technology is not new, bro. They're like running windows 97 type of shit. Right. So it's like, (laughs) bro, it's like, it's all bro. It's an antique. And, and it is the most painful thing. And I remember the trauma response my body was going into when they put me on that to move me is the most painful shit ever. Like I'm screaming to move me. I've broken bones all over my body. And then they transfer yeah. me by picking up uh, the, the bed sheet I was on and moving the bed sheet to transfer me over. And it's just like my full body is trauma, 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 trauma. And they put me inside and I'm finally alone for a second. And I'm like, it's okay to cry. Like, just do it. Just okay. get it out. It's just get it out. Just right now, let it out right now. And I just had a fucking cry like this fucking sucks type of shit, you know, <laughs> let it out, let it out. And then it's coming back out. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm like, I'm okay. Like, 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 I'll just get my shit together. So I had to have that moment. I had many of those 
like there's so many setbacks, man. So many difficult things that came up like that just broke my heart because it was like, okay, my leg rebroke on January 1st, like on New Year's day. Um, yeah, I they saw had put, it on, on IG. Yeah, yeah. They put the wrong pin in and it snapped. And oh. now it was like eight more months. And I was just mm. like, are you serious? Eight more months and you're already in a wheelchair for three months is like, it breaks your heart. So I had this crazy emotional volatility of like, I'm making progress. I'm going to beast my way through this. You know, I'm, I'm a boss. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to muscle my way. And the doctor said, I'll walk again in five, six months. I'll do it in three. And I was like, about it. And then the universe was like, Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then it was like, (laughs) <laughs> snap yeah exactly exactly yeah. so it was such a reoccurring humble thing to happen again yeah. i'd say though when you're speaking on like the emotional part what was really hard for me honestly at the start was to be a victim or sorry sorry to be like a charity case to be like everyone's reaching out like checking in on me like it was hard to receive because usually i'm the one who helps usually i'm the one who like i'm the one who sets things up i'm the leader yeah. i'm the guy i'm this i'm that and now i'm in a wheelchair and people are like showing how much they love me. And my, like it went viral. Like I had hundreds and hundreds of messages. I couldn't even check them all. My friends took away my phone because they're like, you can't right now. You just need to focus on this and heal, get, get out of the hospital. And that was like, whoa, it, it, it made me like physically like, oh, like sob, cry. Like this many people care about me and it was hard to receive. And I was like, wow, that was the first that was the first light bulb in the self-love journey that this was. Cause this whole thing brought me to a deeper sense of self-love. That was the gold. in all of this was people care about me. All the things I've been doing for other people did matter. Cause now they want to show up and help me. Mm-hmm. And I had so many people come through to just like, want to yeah. take care of me. want to be there for me. And it was, it was like, really, it made me emotional. So I get out of the hospital. I'm in a I wheelchair at my house. Story there. I want to say um, a little something before we, it's, yeah, a, yeah. It, it's crazy because I'll talk for myself and then you can validate if it's that for you. But the thing is, especially hearing your story that you were bullied, you were not the hot kid and whatever. It's kind of like, I was cute guy, but not like crazy hot when I was young. And then when you get older, you want to prove yourself. You need validation. Yeah. You don't feel like you're, you deserve love and all that stuff. That's why you have sex with a bunch of women. That's why you're doing all those Instagram model. That's why no, nothing against there's some good one. It's just normally sure. those people are on the same pain as you and you're feeding each other of like, you're so hot. I'm so hot. Let's have sex. And yeah. you know, it's bad, but you're not doing anything about it. And life will humble you down every time. And um, I can just comprehend just a little bit of the pain that it must have been in terms of, yes, I had a motorcycle accident. I was six months off work. I had third degree burn and all that stuff. And when I was in Bali, I remember, so people don't understand in Bali, it's not Canada. Like I went at the hospital bleeding from a a moibo parasite. It was killing me, like killing me. I, I was bleeding. Like I was just walking to the bathroom and you could see blood like coming down my intestine literally like from my ass basically oh wow. and you could follow the trail because it was like i was dying inside and they were feeding me fentanyl and for me i'm too resistant the main doctor had to give me a special dose for like horses to numb me <laughs> down and yeah. i remember after five days it was horrible, bro. They missed my vein. I had two hemorrhage yeah. and my uh, stuff. They're really bad. Like God bless them. Bali has a lot yeah. of amazing thing. They're doing their best. They're good people, but the health system suck. Let's be honest. And after six days, I'm very spiritual. So I'm not really scared of death or anything. And I swear I told myself, I'm like, I don't mind dying now. Like I, I looked up and I was like, you can kill me right now if you want. Like I, I'm done. Like, and obviously, it's when you're not attached to the process, that's not what consciousness has in reserve for you. That, oh, bro, you're yeah. not done with that shit. Also, you're pumped full of horse and all. <laughs> yeah. It's like, bro, so I can't imagine what one year of that stuff, but yeah. it's like one, like I couldn't eat, I couldn't do things. It was literally the parasite was draining me and I, I was so dehydrated that my muscles were cramping. Every time I was drinking water, I was puking it. So I couldn't hydrate. So they had to IV me. And bro, it was like one week of terrible pain. And I was receiving love from social media, obviously. But it's like, I can only imagine like all that pain. And I want people to understand like when you're alone, not in your country, like Bali was kind of your home, but I've been there. I lived there three months. That's when I met you. And it's still not, it doesn't feel like home. Bali is very special in my heart. I would live there any day, but 
you're alone there. You have some friends, but it's like, it's weird. Like it's a weird mental state. And, and that's the little thing I wanted to say before you yeah, keep going yeah. on the story. I want to, I want to speak to the alone part. Actually, that was quite interesting. I mean, there, there's a little mini story before that. And it reminded me when I was in the ICU, when I first got out of the first surgery and then the second, cause those two very rapidly one to save my life. Cause I had lost so much blood. So right now, you and me and everybody listening, we got around 16 hemoglobin. That's what they measured it out there. I don't know what the fuck that was either. But it's the amount of blood cells, white blood cells in your blood. And to get a surgery, you need to have 11. Because otherwise, during surgery, you bleed a lot. So they need to have your blood count at a certain level. At six, you'll likely die. And when we, when they tested mine, finally, I had 5.9. So they were like, yo, <laughs> give this guy blood now. Cause like he yeah. will die. And I was like, I, I'm conscious the whole time. I'm like, yo, give me blood. <laughs> what the fuck? Now. <laughs> like now they told me, I'm like, I'll take blood, please. I'll have that. I'll have that. <laughs> you know? And finally, and in the ICU was just the most intense place. There's like eight to 10 other people almost dying. And they were like going nuts. Like pe- people were like in it, in it, right? And directly across from me was this like other, you know, Indonesian dude. He had a tube down his throat and like in his, like in his body, in his throat. And every like two to three minutes, just when you'd get comfortable and forget about the last one, you'd go and just suck a whole bunch of stuff out of his body, out of his mouth. And it was just like, Ugh! like every time he'd do it, you'd be like, oh. Ugh. And like every three to four minutes, you'd forget about it. You'd be like, okay, like, fuck, that was horrible. And then just like, go back to like, go to sleep or whatever. And then it'd go again. You're just like, ah, and it was directly across from me. And I was just like, God bless that man. I hope he's okay. God bless that man. I hope he's okay. Like, please get better. Please get better. Please stop sucking that noise in front of me. Like, oh God. And finally, a stable enough that they could take me out of the ICU, 24 hour care, like, okay. And get me into my own room. I can't move at this point. Like I literally am physically bedridden. I can't get up. Both my legs are broken. My arms are like this. There's, you know, tubes, all this arm is like the highway of IVs, the painkillers, antibiotics, everything. This is a broken arm. They can't do anything metal in it now. So I'm just like kind of thing, right? I'm stuck. They get me to my own room. Finally, I, I enjoy being alone for a second. I have peace and quiet. I'm just like, thank God. It is quiet. The other room's so loud and beeping. Everything, everybody's monitors, everything. I'm finally like, just to have a second. I'm like, oh, like okay. All right, buddy. You're going to be okay. Like you, you will live. You'll get through this. Okay. You'll be all right. And just then this nurse comes in, a big Balinese nurse, male nurse named Gade. He's huge. Like he's like the biggest Balinese guy I've ever seen, right? Pulls in a cart with soapy water and clean water. And he goes, hello, sir. Sorry, I need to wash you. And I'm like, oh man, I I, like actually, yes. Cause I can't move. I still blood and gravel and dirt all over me. Like I'm mangled. I'm like, please wash me Gade. I'd, I'd appreciate that. He goes, oh, okay. No problem. No problem, sir. I just need to ask. I'm sorry. Like you have a catheter in your penis. And we need to make sure you don't get an infection. Uh, I I need to wash your penis. And I was like, oh, like, I mean, I didn't expect that conversation. And I look, I'm like, oh, there's a tube in my dick. Okay. And he goes, "Uh," I'm like, I don't want an infected penis. I'd like a clean penis. Like, is that okay for you today? And he's like, oh, yes, of course, sir. It's my job. It's it's my job. There's no problem. No problem. It's okay for you. I'm like, yeah, I guess it's okay for me. Like, okay. So we pull my gown out, right? He looks at my penis and he goes, sorry, sir. I just need to ask. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Is it normally this big or is it swollen? (laughs) 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 And and we both start laughing, right? It's such a genuinely funny moment. And I go, good day. I wish it was that big. It's definitely swollen. And we laughed so hard. We're like crying laughing because it was swollen. I took a gas tank to the crotch. I broke my pelvis. So everything's yeah. swollen. So I don't it was like, it's big, you know, but it's not that big. That's not that big. Right? I'm like, wow, that's, that's impressive. And just that me and Gade are crying, laughing, genuine oh, yeah. human connection, genuinely hilarious bro moment. And yeah. a doctor walks in and it's nurse laughing, me laughing, penis out. And the guy's like, what the fuck? <laughs> we all laugh even harder then. And so like there's funny moments in the hospital during like crazy times, like really, yeah. really crazy times. Right. It was hard. And um, when I got out of the hospital, one of the only fans, the only fans girl, this girl I was seeing, 
she left and she went to go obviously date some like able-bodied person. And I was like, wow, I kind of got dumped while I'm in a wheelchair. And that was hard. It was hard to receive. I was like, they hit, hit the ego hard. You know, I, I had to, I couldn't go to the bathroom alone. My friends had to come. The guys at Yogi Lab you met and they picked me up off the toilet and put me back in the wheelchair or pick me up off the wheelchair, put me into bed because my arm was broken. I couldn't transfer myself. Both my legs are broken. So I just would wheel around on this electric wheelchair. Dave got me. Thank you, Dave. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't move, you know? And oh. so I was then alone in my house. I just got kind of dumped and I'm handicapped and it was all of the abandonment issues, all of the depths of like, coming. yo, you're not a boss anymore. Now you're a handicapped person. <laughs> like, what's up? You just got dumped. Yeah. Like now what, you know, what are you going to do now? Are you going to be alone? Are you going to ch chase somebody to come save you and help you? Or are you going to find, what are you going to do now? And it was like, Oh, okay, this is, this is the work. This is what I'm meant to go through. And yeah. I found in this process in the hardest, hardest part to not revert to, you know, the deep addiction or deep, deep comfort, like just numbing all that stuff. Yeah. And Hey, I'm not going to say it wasn't, it was perfect. There was definitely days where I was like, I'm just going to watch Netflix and just do nothing all day. Oh, I'm bro, just gonna, I, like, I feel yeah, you. Yeah. And, it wasn't and, like I was going out playing ping pong. Yeah. And I, God bless. I'll say it there. Like I had one girl that I was like kind of seeing, she was a friend in Bali and stuff. She was a uh, Balinese actually. And mm. uh, she was an amazing girl and she, she stayed like she, mm. she was a, a friend. Um, and she, she helped me. She was sending me food. She was bringing me stuff. She was cheering me up. And, um, it, it reminds you that when you have the right people around you, cause a lot of my other friend in Bali, they just didn't come bro. Like, and I, it wasn't as long as you and stuff. So I can't imagine, but it's like, like my, all my real friend were in Montreal and stuff. So it's like the, the people, like when you're in that situation, sometimes it's hard to accept help, but it feels good to have someone that is there and care for you. So, yeah. Um, and it's just kind of a lesson that I want to tell people that it's cool to fuck girl. It's cool to have a lot of, uh, like a lot of girl, but when you truly find someone, it can be also a friend, a guy friend, whatever. But like, if you have someone that love you, that, you know, will stick there and, and help you raise, like rise up and stuff. It's, it means the world, like to have someone that will genuinely stick with you and be like, yo, you can do this. And, and yeah, Mix it it's, it's, the world. it's a hard feeling to be alone, especially like, yeah, like that especially and if like you guys are listening like if you know somebody going through it you showing up and being that ex doing that extra little thing will mean a lot to them so i saw a lot of people who kind of half-heartedly like get well soon and you're like sure and then people who are like what do you need how can i help i'm coming mm -hmm. over i'm gonna cook you dinner uh, and i had a two-bedroom yeah. place thank god i had so many friends coming and staying over in my, in my old room i had to move downstairs in my office and stairs weren't gonna happen and people would come and stay over and I had amazing depth with people coming to come take care of me and being able to like, you know, that was sweet. But even then, as soon as I could like able to do it, I was cooking steaks for everybody. Like I wanted to cook, like I wanted to help. And that was really difficult for me to sit back and receive uh, mm -hmm. um, rather than just always trying to do the, do the one doing the things. So this was like an interesting process to go through, to be able to receive. Um, I found a place of deeper self love, in this like okay everything that happens to us is for us i mean that's a cliche spiritual term but it's true because mm -hmm. i was meant to go through this i was meant it was meant to happen mm -hmm. i was meant to learn how to take care and love myself and that i am pers uh, that i can persevere through it and it's hard because when they people tell you that stuff like during it like a bunch of my friends were like this will make you this will be the best thing that ever happened to you i'm like <laughs> i can't shit alone like fuck you like i can't even take a shit by myself like no yeah. no don't don't tell me that but yeah. Once you get your head above the water and you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm safe. I have a, I have a mm -hmm. certain level of safety. I'll be okay. There's now a foundation for me to build on. And so just get that certain level of fight or flight over with that. Like I'm going to be okay. And now to work now to set yourself a plan. How do I make this to the best thing that ever happened to me? And yeah. I was like, okay, well start, start building, start doing so. I could still do my client coaching calls and that yeah. was awesome. I could still be useful. So I drive my little motorized wheelchair up to the table, open my zoom call. You know, my calls were usually one hour. I'd be like, we can hang and talk. I'll do two hours. I'll do three. I got nothing else going on. <laughs> like I would like actually yeah. hang out and talk to my clients. Give more so, to people. It was really so. fulfilling. I could still be useful. And that was nice, you know, but what I learned was like not to see 
okay, when am I going to be able to run again? I still can't run yet. But when I'm going to be able to do stuff, right? It was, okay, how do I get to a point where I can stand up? Okay, how can I get to a point where I can walk a little bit? like with crutches, how can I get to a point where I can go up the stairs? Like I haven't gone up the stairs yet. The best thing, okay. Even scaling back was I was at my buddy Dylan Werner's house and he has a big tub. And I was like, I could probably get in that tub. And I haven't, wasn't able to, I was taking showers out of the sink because I couldn't get into the shower. Right. So it was so unsatisfying to be like splash, splash, splash. And like oh. sponge, like it's just bullshit. You, and it's hot in Bali. So you're just like, it's bullshit. You don't like it. And I'm smelling. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're just sticky. And it's just like oh, so unsatisfying. Right. So finally I was able to, at this point, get into his tub and use a little hand shower thingy. And the first time I felt water over my head, I went, <laughs> and uh, I had this like genuine child laugh of like Christmas morning, like, thank you, God. And yeah. I had this relationship to God open up where I was like, every time I could do a new thing, I'd say, thank you, God. And it was like, Oh, there's that. There's actual gratitude. Yes. Yeah. Gratitude. That's it. Okay. Man. There's this. Thank you for this. Mm -hmm. And cause you lost it. You realize how much you're actually given. So us to be able to have this conversation, we're given so much. You guys to be able to listen to it. You have ears. Thank you, God. Yeah. You know, you it's, the, it's crazy, the, man. It's that's why yeah. I do the. I have this uh, gratitude journal actually that I mm -hmm. created. My girlfriend put me into uh, journaling gratitude, and it's like it's it's so stupid. Like, cause like people are chasing Lamborghini and Range Rover and all that shit, but like, bro. The joy of getting sh like just water, hot water on your head yep. Yep. means 10 Range Rover at that time. So it's like, it's, it's just Rovers. the fact that I was in bleeding <laughs> or the fact that the wounds are healed or any big yep. major, if you know, if you've been once in your life in the hospital and I, I've been there like four or five times that you're going to die. Mm. Like once I had my appendicides explode. And uh, they had to keep me seven days because it's like when it explodes, there's a high chance of toxicity. You're going to die. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, yeah, I woke up. They're like, oh, sir, we need to keep you for more days, actually. I'm like, what? I was like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, it exploded. The doctor would took it taking too long to, oh, my God. Like, because it's free in Canada. So they put me on the table for 15 hours before the surgeon came. And then when it exploded, they're like, oh, actually, sir, this guy needs helps now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just fainted from the pain. <laughs> and when serious. I woke up, it's like. Oh, Mike, you're going to be there for seven days. I'm like, the fuck seven days? I thought it was a little operation. Yeah, it exploded. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and then, <laughs> yeah, it exploded. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy's like, it's kind of serious. You could have died. I'm like, oh, thanks, bro. This is fucking amazing. And all that stuff that you tend to forget every day. So I do like you now. It's like when I sit and I'm going to eat my meal, like I'm, go I'm super hungry now. I'm going to eat after the podcast. I'm going to go and I'm going to be like, Thank you. And it can be God consciousness, whatever you want to call it, guys. Whatever God is it just is. an easy word to say. Summarize up. the divine cosmic intelligence that yeah. interbinds all of us together right now. Exactly. <laughs> okay, God. The higher just call consciousness. It yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. um it's so stupid. Like like to to realize everything you're given that when you've been stripped away of everything, you're like, can I just walk? Can I just here yep. can i just have sex again can i just whatever bro it's like the simple meaningless thing of life <laughs> want to hear a little so funny good. story about that <laughs> so so when they took the cat back in the hospital right and i'm paralyzed i can't fucking walk and they took the catheter out on day 11 and so they took this tube they're like the, the day before they're like we're gonna test your bladder because i ruptured my bladder they took a gas tank to the crotch right so they're like we need to test your bladder to see if it healed because that'll heal on its own hopefully but we can't like operate on your bladder or they let it heal on its own. I'm like, okay. So it was really painful to pee with this catheter. Everything sucked. Oh. Right. But finally they're like, okay, they wheeled me down into the, the operating room five in the morning. It's my third time back in this operating room in 10 days. They're like you again. I'm like, Oh, I just like it here. And they all laugh. Right. <laughs> We're like joking around. <laughs> I'll so, take more. I'll take more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just think it's cool in here. It's great. Nice. Nice. I like what you've done with the place. Right. <laughs> Freezing. And when you go there, right? <laughs> put me on the bed. They're like, okay, this, this will be a little uncomfortable. We're going to put this radioactive dye inside of your, uh, in the catheter, up your dick hole and into your bladder. And we're going to test your bladder. I'm like, that sounds horrible. <laughs> They're like, yeah, don't worry. We'll give you something for the pain. I'm like, okay. So before they wheel me down, they give me like two shots of uh, like, they're giving me on morphine. I'm on a heavy morphine drip. They bring me down into this operating room. Then they put me on this table 
and they bring out two syringes. One is orange and one is clear. I'm like, what is that? They're like, oh, this is ketamine. This is fentanyl. I'm like, what? Uh, for <laughs> yeah, free? For free? Yeah. <laughs> so they're just going to straight inject me with ketamine and fentanyl now. I'm like, okay. Oh, and so shit. they shoot me up and all of a sudden I'm like, oh. oh <laughs> like it just like, it just instantly so high, right? They're <laughs> like, okay, Aaron, now we're going to put the fluid in. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. so they, they start pumping me in and it's like the weirdest feeling to have your bladder filled up from outside in. is oh, so bro. weird. It's so it's weird. It's so bad. <laughs> I did it sober um, in uh, Canada no. once. <clears throat> I thought I had something. I was always like going to pee. So at first I thought mm. I was like, do I have an STD or something? I went to check yeah, yeah. three times. I don't get anything. I'm clean. I got to the hospital and it's, it's, a, it's a hose that they put in, yep. in, in the yeah, hole. Yeah, it's a exactly. hose pushing Catherine. water inside. Bro, yeah. The, the least the masculine worst. thing. My yeah. my legs are high up in the air. Your butthole is there. They put a little liquid on my on my thing, and there's a girl. <laughs> she's like 23 years old, super hot girl. She's looking at me and she's putting the thing on my. I'm like, ah, oh, no, you gotta be fucking with me. And my ex used to work at the hospital there, and I'm like, this is not good. Like, and they, it's the worst feeling, bro. It's like they. Yeah. Gross. They pour water. It's going to fill your bladder. So it feels like you're peeing inside of yourself. And then when they remove it and then imagine it's, it's guys, if you don't know, it's like the, the, the tube is like probably your tongue trying to fit in that hole because <laughs> they have to, they have it something behind a water hose going inside. So I know exactly yeah, the yeah. feeling. It's, and, it's gnarly. Every single oh, guy listening right now is cringing and holding their gross. dick. They're all like, it was oh, bad. It sucks. Like, so yeah. bad. So the the water goes in, turns out my bladder's okay. They're like, look at the screen, Aaron. I look, the screen's melting. I'm high as fuck. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no, that, that's so just, the other side. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I was looking shit. at a wall, you know? Yeah. And and so then they wheel me out of there and I take the most longest, most intense pee to pee it all out of my life. Like it was like a, a 15 minute ordeal trying to pee. It was so intense. And I was just like, oh, like getting it out is crazy, right? And and, uh, and then they take out the catheter and I was so happy to have it out. And then like a day or like a few hours later on in the day, I got an erection and it was, I was worried I would never get an erection again. And I actually got hard and I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh and I, call my, I call my friends. I call the girl that I was seeing. I'm like, I got an erection. She's like, I'll come over and wear a skirt. I'm like, do it. Yeah, do it. And we text in the hospital. <laughs> oh my I'm God. Like, I'm like, Paralyzed, I'll broken be in, pelvis. I'll be in Bali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably, probably. Thank you, Bali government. Uh, sorry, I didn't have that. That didn't happen. Don't, don't deport me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, so yeah, it was. It was just like a crazy experience to go through mm-hmm. it all, and then just learn. Like I don't think I've ever been happier. And then now, like since going through all this, so like yeah. it did have a massive net positive. It only happened that I got this happy when I started walking again and I was like, okay, I can like, I can walk. It's still not easy. I got metal in both my legs. I got metal in my pelvis. It sucks. Stairs are a bitch. But when I was able to start getting progress and then when I went back to Vancouver, cause like I said, I grew up here. There's a lot of trauma here. I was definitely, you know, just in my Coming back to family. Yeah. Yeah. Family. It's a good test. But it's a good test. It's, yeah. How spiritual are you? Go see your parents. Go see your parents. Go, go see yeah, them. Man. yeah. Yeah. That's hard. That's hard. And going back to my hood and I was like, okay, I had to do a lot of work. And I think this is a really good thing for anybody because it really worked for me. But if you have to go and do something, that's a trigger. That's a challenge. Like you have to go and go back to where your ex is, or you have to go back and see your family, or maybe you're an addict and you got to go back into that environment, whatever it is, do the pregame, the pre-work. Cause I was triggered. I'm like, I got to go home and that place is toxic for me. It was uh, cause I was toxic. And I need to shift my mindset around this before I go and I need to be in a right place. So I go there and it'd be positive. And it was a two week trip planning for my, um, my cousin's uh, wedding. And I was going to surprise my family for the wedding. So I did a whole, and I was on crutches. They didn't think I could make it. They said, uh, the doctor said, if I fly, I'll get a blood clot. It'll go to my lungs. I'll die. And I was like, I ain't dying like that. Like I, I'm not going to die like that. After going through all this, that's not how Aaron Baez going up. That's not happening. But I learned how to actually, okay, you got to move your legs. You got to like, I developed systems, you know, around how to not get blood clots on a flight. It's like 30 hours. Super far, super long. So 
I studied and trained as much as I could to make this two weeks is what I thought it was going to be two weeks to make this the uh, powerful two weeks. And I was like, okay, there's the trauma. I don't want to go home and see my family and my cousins as a handicapped person. Like I want to go back a hero. Like I want my little cousins to be like, he's the man I want. You know, I want to be coming back in a powerful space. This is the weakest I've ever been in my whole life. I can't even go upstairs properly. Like I'm on two crutches. The ones that like, you know, Timmy from South Park wears like I'm, I look <laughs> ridiculous, right? I look, I look like I've been shot when I go back to Vancouver. I'm this tattoo. People are like, did he get shot? Like actually got asked that when I first got back and somebody that I knew was working at this protein shake place. And I went to high school with them. He's like, did you get shot? Like the first thing he asked. And I'm like, what? No, you know, it was like <laughs> hilarious. And so I trained and I did a bunch of the spiritual work and a bunch of this inner game and a bunch of counseling and hypnotherapy and, and all the things I could because mm -hmm. I knew I had to get my mind right because me going back to Vancouver where I was addicted to drugs and I'm on morphine, you know, I was on at the time. So I'm like, it's, it's dangerous for me. Like, this is a thing. And, you know, it's a lot of triggers. So how am I going to handle that? And I talked to one of the counselors and I said, she's like, why do you want to go? And I'm like, I want to show my family I love them this much that I would train my ass off to get strong enough to fly across the world while I'm in this space to show up to the wedding and to show my family. This is what you mean to me. She said, why wouldn't you do it for yourself? Because you love yourself that much to heal this heart so you can walk again. And I was like, oh, shit. Wow. That hit me like a ton of bricks. I instantly started crying. I was like, why don't I love myself as much as I would show I love other people? Mm -hmm. What's up with that? Where Where's that coming from? <clears throat> And I shifted my whole perspective around it to, I love me this much to do this for me. And yeah. that was like, ding, okay. And I think that's an experiential thing we all got to go through because how much of do we do for other people and please other people when we should be loving ourselves in a deeper way to respect ourselves, to care for ourselves, yeah. to eat well, to do the hard things for ourselves. So that started shifting for me. This was the golden nugget. And I get back to Vancouver and my intention. And the other thing is when you're going into a hard situation like this, a trigger situation, set an intention. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to be for yourself? Who are you going to be for other people? What's your objective, your intention for this? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I am going to be an agent of love and positivity. I'm going to show up for my family, love them up. I'm going to show them that I care about them this much. I'll be an asset to every room I'm in. And then I'll go back to Bali to my healing journey. When I got back, my family was astounded. I made it. They're all crying. They're super happy. I came. That felt so good. I'm like, that was worth it. That was worth it right there. Okay, good. Then I met up with one of my buddies. He's wanting to shift his life. You know, he, he was in the same business I was in and wants to do other things. And he's like, I want to open a business. I don't know what to do. I want to open up tattoo shops like you. He's like, would you help me? I'm like, anything you need, bro. Just give me the, just tell me, like, I'll give you any free help, whatever you want. He's like, would you partner with me. I'll pay for everything. I'll give you half. I'm like, yep, that's a good deal for me. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so it was just like, yeah, Green great deal. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Okay. And then I saw my ex-girlfriend that I hadn't seen from, you know, we dated when I was 24, uh, 25. And I was a shitty, like I was just a nutcase at this time, you know, really in my ego. And I saw her again. I was like, why didn't I marry her? Right away, it was just like, ding, perfect, love. And I got a surgery to fix what they did in Bali in my legs, like within a couple of weeks. And the, the healthcare system's backed up, you know, a year. And they were like, no, you have a bone infection. We need to fix it right away. So I got a surgery to correct it. And so it was like girlfriend surgery business as soon as in I Vancouver. got back in Vancouver. And so it sucked me back in. I've been here six months now and everything's been so expansive. So go, and I knew I was supposed to be here to like, help the community, serve the community, help my people. And I'm needed here again. And I'm like, you know, coaching a lot of people here, getting drug dealers out of the game, <clears throat> helping them start yeah. their businesses. That's been juicy, you know? Yeah. A lot of good stuff, man. And mm -hmm. it's like people, uh, they, there's only two problem. Like they, it's, and it's not problem. It's, there's only two root cause of everything. It's like not feeling love and not being enough. The impression mm -hmm. of not being enough because you are enough from the moment you're born to the moment you die, you were enough. Mm -hmm. You made that illusion that you're not enough. And especially at, like for us guys and stuff, it's like constantly want to prove, especially you want hot girl, you want the fame, you want all that cool shit on IG. So you're going to do things out of ego and you're not earth centered and you're very unbalanced and you're masculine. And I love to hear story. I love to feel 
when, because you were an amazing person when I met you already, you were Thank like you. doing things. It's like, I had a great connection with you. I won't lie. And, and I was at the same space. Like when I met you, actually, it's when I left, I was depressed in Canada. I left to find myself and I was like, I'm not going to come back from Bali until I heal myself. And that's what I did. And I wasn't mm. perfect when I came back. It took three months. And then when I came back, I was just a new being that was like, I'm going to apply everything I, I found there and I'm going to bring it in the journey. And like you did, and it's, it's amazing. And you, you change every day, you're still growing and stuff, but it's, it's so humbling. And we were talking about it before we started the podcast. Like, I love to be humble. Like that's, that's when I'm going to consume psilocybin and do journey. It's like, humble me down. Like, show me mm-hmm. I'm not the greatest. Like, I'm just another human. Show me where I can't see where I, f- like I fell. And, um, and I'm still learning every day. And, and it's so cool that like you see your ex and you're like, wow, it's like, this was there. And I, and it's not always the case with ex, but with girls, you know, that sometimes it's like, wow, it's like, this was there and I didn't see it. And I was so focused on tapping all those girls and whatever. And it, <clears throat> it's like, and even me, it's like, like last time I did a, a journey, it's like, sometime I noticed I was selfish. Like I, I didn't actually see the whole, like I was with my girl for almost a year and I didn't ever pay close attention to her tattoo. I knew she's tattooed, but I never asked the story and stuff. And then I was like, fuck, I'm like, I'm not being the best version I can be. And, and when you reconnect in your heart, you, it's like, you realize that you can be so much better and just op- operate out of love. And, and love this it. will attract you so much more. Yeah, absolutely. And you touched on a few good points there that, you know, I, I think I, that circle back to mine and, and yours are so aligned is like, okay, the tattoo, you saw that differently because you shifted, you had a shift inside. Right. And I, I saw myself differently. Um, I saw everything differently, my relationship to love and people and everything and pain, especially pain shifted for me where it was just like, okay, this can get deeper and keep me present and keep me thankful for I'm alive to feel this pain rather than Mm -hmm. how every step hurts. Fuck this life. It's more like I made it. At least I can feel this, you know, and this too, I can feel this pain and still smile. So yeah, yeah, and I can go up the stairs and I'll be effective human and I'll do this. I'll take this and do that. So it keeps you motivated, sharpened. But what I loved is that you saw that you shifted and then you saw a tattoo different. I shifted and I saw Vancouver different. So this place used mm-hmm. to be scary and toxic and, and horrible for me. But when I shifted internally, I was like, oh, okay, shift. everything changes, of course, right? My family, I changed and I'm like, I'm going to be an asset to my family, take care of my mom and do all this stuff. But before I was like, my parents and me are so different. It's crazy. My sister and me are so different. It's crazy. And I didn't, I just was happy to be away from them, to be totally honest. And now when I shifted, I was like, I can help. I, mm-hmm. I changed. Now they changed for me. They're still the same, to be honest, like in a little different way, but I was able to shift me to shift my relationship to them. And I think yeah. that like all of us can do that in a different way. So if you're having trouble with your folks or you're having trouble with people at work or whatever, anything in your life, all you got to do is change you. If you change the yeah. way that you react to your external stimulus, your external, it will shift. You change the way you look at things. Things you look at will change. Wayne Dyer, you know, that, that is, is the way the world works. So the only thing yeah. that we have responsibility of is, okay, let's, how do we shift? How do we level up? How do we, yeah. how do we work and on this? Yeah. If you send love, it's like same thing. I went three months this summer back home and, um, it's always like, um, you go back to old friend, old habits, family and all that stuff. And you have to operate in a higher frequency. And sometimes my girlfriend was like, okay, now you're triggered. I'm like, yeah. Cause I stayed three months. I was like, okay, now I need to go back resource. Yeah. And then, then I can come back for another round. But it's like, um, yeah, like you said, they, not, it's not necessarily that they will change. It's because you have a different approach. So when I'm trying to coach now, I'm trying to do it out of love and just, giving love and trying to be present and doing this and then putting your boundaries with your family and being like, okay, this is enough. Like this is not going to work. And then today I have enough and tomorrow I'll come back and we can circle back and, and whatever. And it's like for the first time, let's say this summer, my mom was listening because I had a different approach of how I was operating thing. And when you change your world change and the perception and what you attract and what you create will change. So same thing. It's like, 
if for you it's all about drug dealer and negative and this and that, you're going to come there with creating that intention. Now you're like, exactly. yo, I can change my world. And yeah, you're going to attract different stuff there. Uh, I want to touch on the mom thing and the coming back thing. Because, uh, <laughs> the coming back thing first was like, uh, I was worried about being back in Vancouver because there could be a lot of negativity. And then, you know, I was like, what about guys I used to work with? What about people who are jealous? What about, you know, guys, who, you know, what about, what about, what about? And I realized, and also like negativity from some of the more judgmental people in my family. But I was like, the thing that really worked was just vibrating at a frequency that's higher than that. Like I just operate up here. I do up here things. So all that like jealousy, entertaining, all the infighting, anything that like that, I'm, I'm just, I don't operate that level right now. I just yeah. operate at love frequency and just focus on the positives and moving forward. And when that stuff does come up, you answer it from up here. So they have to join to raise you or it doesn't quite mix and it goes away. You repel it. And that was something that I was like, okay, that's possible to do. And yes, you have to get your hands dirty sometimes. And like, yes, it will get muddy and hard. And like, yes, uh -huh. but if you focus on cleanliness and purity, you are what you do. So just like a salt is clean because it cleans, you know, I'm just going to stay positive and I'll be positive. And that's yeah. like, okay. That, that worked for me. And then, the mom thing this came up with me today man so my mom's quite overweight right she's she she eats a lot and, and she eats her feelings and she's i've been trying big. my best <laughs> yeah, forever like my, my whole life right and i've been like trying to get her to shift to be healthier because like i'm gonna be the one who has to take care of her like it's gonna be my problem later i'm like yo mom come on like can you please get healthy i've been taking her to the gym i got her meditating you know i've been like getting her progress but yeah. like anybody in the fitness game or anything like that, there's always people who, you know, you get her in it for like a couple of months and you fall off. Um, so one of her trainers, she's doing it for you. It's like yeah, her subconscious yeah. is just doing it for you. So it's like, it's funniest hard. thing is though, I got her like a hot trainer, like this guy and like, he's cool. Like I love this guy. Shout out Matt. And he's like this jacked, handsome Australian guy. So she like low key likes going and I'm like, ha. like, you know, it's perfect. And I bug her about it all the time. I'm like, you're just got a crush on Matt. It's great. Right. And she's like, no, I don't stop it. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, but like I, that way kept her motivating. So I'm like, yeah. my mom should have hot young guys in her life to keep her young. I'm happy to see that. I'm like, I'll yeah. go for it, mom. But like, he went to go visit his family for Australia. And in Australia, my mom had like kind of fell off. And so the other day I bought some gifts for a couple of my friends that have been treating me in acupuncture and just, I bought Christmas gifts. And I asked her, cause I'm living at home until I get a place while I'm moving back here. And it's very interesting, you know, being a man living back with your parents is weird. And <sighs> It's yeah, beautiful at some point because I'm happy to be around them. And at the other point, it's like, what am I doing? And uh, in the <laughs> meantime, I'm just like, enjoy it, enjoy it. And then I asked my mom, can you, can you, can you wrap up these Christmas presents for me? Obviously, I'm, I'm not good at wrapping pre wrap presents. I fucked that up bad, you know? And so my mom will do, well, good job. It's a mom thing to do for sure. So you know, pass that off to mom. And she said, yeah, she'll get it done. What time do you need it? I'm like, well, I need it this morning today, you know, by 9 a.m. So she had no. two days to do it. <laughs> Two, she had two days to do it, two full days, right? And this morning, I wake up before everybody in my whole house. Uh, I get up early and I go downstairs. I do a little bit of work before I go to the gym. And the presents, nothing's done. Not only are they not done, she was eating like a bag of these like chocolate balls with like tuxedo cake, chocolate cake pop, like the most fucked up fatty thing. And she, she hid that. It was half empty bag inside where she was supposed to wrap the presents. So I'm just like, what the fuck? Right? Like, not only did you not do the thing, you've stashed your snacks inside the thing you're hiding from us. You know? And I was just like, Ugh. you know, I was like, uh, I was so annoyed. And, and, I, and I, like, I was like telling her like, this needs to stop. Like, you can't do this. I'm gonna have to take care of you later. Like you can't be picking out. And then just right now, while I've been telling you this, literally, I just had this realization. I'm like, I wonder how they felt when I was a fucking crazy teenager and I was just like crashing their cars. And I was just like, yeah. you know, I was, just a, I was a shitty, I was getting arrested. You know, I was a known drug dealer. Like I was bad. And how did they feel that they were like, go to school, do your thing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't miss it. <clears throat> like, so the lesson wow. for me, and <laughs> yeah. that's a lesson you can take too with your mom is like, Bro, you don't change anyone. And and yeah, the problem yeah, yeah. With, with, with parents is we're involved emotionally. And that's what I learned. So I had a lot of psychic that told me like, bro, my, 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 my gut problem, everything was related to my mom, you know, like, and uh, I was triggered every time. And, and when I stopped mm. caring about like the outcome, so it's like, what I do now is I give love 
without expectation. I don't expect change. I don't expect anything. I just give love. And then if she receives, she receives. And then I don't try to change nobody. And, and like you said, everybody is there to do their own journey. I believe that you choose everything that's going to happen to you. So she did the same and she's going to have to pay the price at some point of what she's doing right now. And don't feel guilty about it. Like it's, it's at the end of the day, bro, she's doing that to herself. And it's like, you're doing the best and you're already doing more. And I was the same. I, I try to teach her meditation. I tried to do this, this, this. Now I left an impact after three months that when I left, I was like, when I leave, I'm like, mom, the real thing is, are you going to keep doing those things without me in your life? Like, it's easy to meditate when I meditate in front of you. It's easy to do the cold bath when I do the cold bath with like next to like right before you. It's easy to mm-hmm. do those shit when I remind you to be positive every day. But when I'm not there, are you going to stick to it? And she did to a point and she's improving uh, and good. I'm happy to see it. And she's happy to tell me. And the thing is like, there's one thing I told her. I'm like, mom, you're doing it for me. Do it for yourself. And the same yeah. that the people told you, like, yeah, yeah. If you do it for me, mom, you're going to quit. Like do it yeah, for yourself, yeah. please. Like find a reason to do it for yourself and love yourself enough to do it. Because that's at the end of the day, when people are getting fat and unhealthy, when I say get healthy, it's not to have a six pack. You can get that if you want. It's bro. It's a lot of thing that comes with being unhealthy and, and having all that Tons. sugar and that fat, bro. You're going to get Absolutely. a lot of bad stuff. And she has diabetes now. Like it's and it's like, all about the diet yeah. for diabetes most of the time. And, and she has a lot of trauma, a lot of things to heal. And it's really hard to help people that you care about because they see you a certain way. Your mom see you as her kid, then a drug dealer. And then this is this. So before you're someone like, that's why when I, when we went to my girlfriend's family, I was the one teaching because you can't hmm. preach in your own church. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's really hard. And, and my, and I was telling my girlfriend, actually, babe, you go talk to my mom. You do that stuff. Like I've, I've go do it for me. And she's going to listen to you. They have the same birthday, both Sweet. spicy. I'm like, mm-hmm. you, you take care of that shit. Water sign. Every time I talk, you both cry. You do the lesson. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a, like, I'm a fire sign. I hit hard me when too. I speak. Yeah. And, and me too. What, you're Aries? <laughs> yeah, probably Aries. Oh yeah, I'm Leo. But the thing is like, bro, it's yeah. like, Sometimes we, we very direct and well, yep. sometimes all the time. And, and, um, it's hard with your mom and I, I feel that I've been there. It's like the inner child, the wounded child. And then, uh, for my mom, let's say I was the man that she, she was disappointed of every man in her life ever. And then I mm-hmm. told her, mom, you can't put being loved by men and all that shit on me. Cause I'm the only I, I have two sisters and I'm like, you're putting all that on me, mom. I, 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 why, why are you doing that? Like it, it doesn't, I, it shouldn't be like that. And mm-hmm. maybe your mom is doing the same. And it's like, she didn't get loved by any man. And now you're responsible of giving me love. And I'm like, Whoa, I'm responsible of no shit. <laughs> like yeah, I give you yeah. love when I see you and I give you love when I talk to you, but that's it. Don't put that on me. Yeah. And how much of this, like the parent stuff, like, I think this is a big thing to heal, especially for like, any of us who want abundance and relationships and love in yeah. life, it's like, we got to get right with our folks. And so it's like so important that we have to get right with our parents and see them now as we become into the stage where we take care of them. Like we're getting where we are men now, you know, and a lot yeah. of people listening, you're a woman now, the roles are reversed. The sh- things are shifting, but yeah. that also comes with uh, your parents unconditionally cared and loved you. You know, they, they, they dealt with your shit. So now we have yeah. to actually have that same level of losing the resentment because there's so just we with often love. have, yeah, just with love. And I'm like, okay, I need to do that. I can't be resentful where I'm like, oh, these habits. And I'm like, what did I took on these habits? I can see myself in my mom. I can see myself in my dad, my dad's yeah. temper, you know, my mom's addictive oh, side. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I took that. I took that it's, and I'm annoyed. And then I have to drop that. And I'm like, nope. I have to let go of that. And that will yeah. then heal my relationships with everybody else around me. Heal my relationships with money. It'll bring in more with abundance. Girls, It'll bring in more if, love. If everything, everything. The more I heal with my mom, the more I can uh, be a, a better relationship with my, with my girlfriend and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like just out of love and, and respect. And you see it because you've healed it, most of it. And you still see how you were and what they transmuted and they gave you love, but you took some bad habits. I see the same with my parents and, um, you just have to do it out of love. And it, it's, it's crazy because every spiritual person I know, they have to do it for their whole family, just like us. It's a big, but you choose it. 
you choose it before you come. I know I signed up for that shit. And I was the one that got to come heal everybody. And I, good, like I'll, I'll do it. And um, you choose your parents. And, and, and when I do psilocybin, I see it very clearly. Sometimes I have really good, vivid talk with my mom. One of, one of the journey was 100% with my parents for like four hours. We had a talk and I was like, this is so fucking stupid. Like, like, cause when you're elevated vibration, pure love and in, in, in high frequency, like meditative state on, on psilocybin or whatever, you can do it sober, but psilocybin get you there faster if you're ready. Um, if you're ready guys, <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> cause there's yeah, yeah. a lot of healing shit, but you don't have bad trip. You have what you deserve. So take it yeah, on and yeah. stop crying about it. And be in a safe I place. Talking, <laughs> I was talking with my mom and I was like, this is so fucking stupid. Like, look at us having fights over little shit, a little meaningless when we're both high vibrancy people. We're so much love. We choose, you choose me. I choose you. Same with my dad. And now on a human side, I get triggered because you're not the way I want you to be because that's what it is. They're not how you want them to be. And it's a good lesson because your kid won't be the way you want them to be. So get, yeah. get fucking ready because your kid, yeah. they'll be there. Your parents, it's like, like us, we left and we took a break, but your kid, they're going to be in your fucking life. You better be ready, man. <laughs> what? That's so funny. What kind of kids do you think, since you choose your parents, like what kind of kids do you think are going to choose you? What do you think your kids are going to be like? Um, I mean, so one thing I'll give to my parents and one thing um, I can tell a lot of people is like, my parents got me when they were young. That was the, the trend back then. Now, how old are you? 34. Yeah. So I'm 31. I'm going to have kid maybe around 33. And bro, if I had kid at 22, 24, oh my oh, God. Oh man. my God. I can't see where they become oh, like us. It is and, so uh, bad. <laughs> and so, <laughs> it so, so, bad. so the thing is, honestly, no matter what happened in my past, no matter, like they've been the amazing parents. I don't blame them for anything. And I, I and we're, we were talking about that with my girlfriend. It's like, I could choose to see a bad side. Like I choose to see the good side. I choose to see what they gave me and it was amazing. And they were amazing parents and uh, they did the best as they could. And you don't realize what you don't know. So if you don't know, you're transmuting all those subconscious behavior and pattern to your kids. You don't know. So you're doing, bro, you're a fucking kid. When you get kid at 23, 22, you're a kid. So you're transmuting Absolutely. a lot of bad shit for the yep. first seven years old. Now I think I'll be an amazing father because, um, I'm grown up. I'm 31. I'll be 33. I did a lot of work. I've been in this, that thing for 15 years and I've been very intensely. And now I coach people. And I, the last four years have been very intense for me. And, um, I'll be an amazing father. And it's like with my dog, my dog was a lot of practice. I got two French bulldog. And when I got them, I made a promise to myself. First, I'm never going to hit them ever. I'm never going to, no matter what they do. And I'm not going to lose my shit. And bro, two puppy that shit in your house five times a day and pee in your house. And one of them oh, had yeah, a face yeah. that he was smearing the poop on the floor in my penthouse in Beverly Hills. And um, <laughs> he was in a phase of two months of eating his poop. But when he was eating it, it was not that he was <sighs> eating it. He was smearing it. Uh, and then I was just like, at some point I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. I can't believe it. Like, yeah, and I was just yeah. like, I'm never going to get mad. Like, and my girlfriend's always laughing. And, and, and my mom, when I was with my dog, they were sh sometimes shitting in the house because the other little uh, dog were shitting in the house. So it's like free for all. And my mom <laughs> is picking it up, complaining. And I'm like, mom, you got to pick it up no matter what. So shut up. Like it, it, you, there's nothing you can do about it. And that's what, that's the mindset that I developed, especially with Doug is like, Hey, I like this. they don't even know, like, it's going to happen. Just do it. And, and like my dog, I have painting that I ship from Bali. So they're I'm very attached to those painting because they remind me of my spiritual journey. I have a big Buddha, gold Buddha, big elephant and a mm -hmm. big lion. And my dog one day in the new house peed on my painting. And my <laughs> girlfriend, she come and she's like, I ah, peed on your painting. I'm like, okay, like just give me vinegar. I'll shoot the painting. I'll buy another one. This is, I never complained. They uh, peed on my bed like so many times, like my very expensive duvet and all that stuff. And I'm, I just never get mad. I'm like, who did that? And then, uh, are they better now? <laughs> did they get better now? Yeah, yeah, they're amazing. It's just um, okay, good. Puppy sometimes uh, Ob, yeah, when he was when I was just cleaning it, that's another thing. When I was just cleaning it, the thing was not smelling like him. So I was cleaning him. Both were on the bed. I was going in the shower, ready to go to bed. It's 10 p.m. and I'm tired. And then I come back and they peed in my bed, and I'm like, 
And then um, sometimes multiple times a week. And I was like, bro, like then I, you I have understood the patience after of a Buddha. Time, and then I was like, you know what, bro? I, I made a promise to myself. And sometimes I was like, I just wanted to slap his little butt. And I'm like, he's not going to understand like that. So I think I'll be an amazing father just because of all that work I did and all that That's testing. Good. But mm-hmm. I know it's going to be a very hard challenge. And I know sometime you want to lose your shit and it just, you, you get better at it. And I won't be perfect. I mean, yeah. at some point I might lose it on my kid and it's just like, <clears throat> I don't think I will. I'll do my best not to with tools like meditation and all that stuff. It's like, you can alternate, you can get a nanny if you need a little break. It's mm-hmm. important to take time for yourself. That's, that's, that's for sure. And yeah, I, I think, think you'll be an amazing father too. Like, cause you're you. older, you're grown up, you you've been through all that. It's like, yeah, I can't wait to beat my children. No, I'm, just I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like with our karma, though, we'll have very hot daughters, and it'll be something oh. that we'll have to go through as men. <laughs> for sure, but she's not getting out of the house until she's no. twenty-five. <laughs> Did you ever see Bad Boys Two, where like the, the with the, the gun, the, the, yeah, <laughs> the son comes to take him on a date, and that would be us. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, I think we'll raise them in a way that. Um, one thing I can say is I was I never been an asshole with girls. I I, I slept around. I mean I consumed girls. Yeah. That was my yeah, my addiction. Yeah. Uh, but too. I was always honest. I was telling them that I was sleeping with three, four, five, ten other girls. Like it's never I never lied about it. Um, and girls are picking it. They they want that thing. And yeah, you, like yeah. you're picking those girls. It, it goes both ways. So it's a lesson learned. And if my kid has to go through that to learn, then so be it. And the thing is, like I'll do my best. But at the end, I attach no outcome to it. If I raise the best kid in high vibration, they'll do good. But yeah, yeah. just like your parent, just like you for your parent, you had to learn. You had to go through a, a bunch of shit. And you know, you, so your worst experience or your best lesson. And that's the same for me. And it made you the person you are. So all the things that happened to me in the past, if it, they didn't happen, I, I wouldn't be the man that I am. And I'm going to raise the best daughter I can, but I know she's going to be really hot. And I know it's going to be a very, very much challenge. uh, (laughs) I always be there for her. Like, like I I would kill for my dog hands down. So I don't, I can't imagine for my daughter, like, like I would see someone kick my dog in the street. Something I could not control. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine someone would hurt like your daughter and, and stuff like, but the thing is like, I'll do my best and, and, it's like she's going to have to live her lesson and learn and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, absolutely. Like I should not have guns. <laughs> I should not have guns. Like I should just not. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. It's it's going to be an interesting thing to go through that, that stage of life. And I do think me going through all I've been through, especially since the accident, was a deepening so I could prepare for that next stage. And I feel like there's so much of that. Business-wise, there's that, you know, love life wise health wise consciousness wise yeah. we we go through shit so we can expand you know that's just how it goes yeah you know and that abundance thing i like that your your podcast is on that because you know abundance isn't just monetary it's also mm-hmm. quality of life having an yeah. abundantly rich life that you have people you have your loves you have your friends you have yeah. health you got wealth you got a connection to spirituality god whatever you want to call it that that's made an actual deep, deep, deep life for me. Like yeah. I, what I coach on now is like, Hey, yeah, we can do business coaching. Yeah. We can do life coaching, but mm-hmm. let's, let's focus on these things though. I love health, wealth, family, God, those four things, you know, and you know, God is spirituality. Family is like your people, your friends, your relationships, your, your tribe, your community. Mm-hmm. Wealth is, yeah, of course. How are you generating income, but also how wealthy is your life? Like what's your quality of life? Whoa. Yeah. How's the, what's the quality of what you're doing and, and, and impacting and then health, mental health, physical health. And yeah. where's your, where's your head at? Where's your heart at? And, and are you connected to your soul and God, you know, okay, these things yeah. make up an actual grounded human. And then awesome stuff happens once you get right with yourself. Once you, once you're, you'll, you'll get wealthy. If you, if, if you're operating from abundance and love, you'll mm-hmm. get wealthy. Like if, if, if it's part of the plan. So like mm-hmm. I tell to people, you want a million dollar, but for what, like at the end of the day is what you're trying to accomplish needs a million dollars. So I'm a hairdresser. I'm a barber. In order to do 
what I love. Do I need to be a millionaire? No. Then if my passion is to have businesses and run them and do this, then it could lead to being a millionaire. I got a friend that's a, a barber, a millionaire. And the thing is, <clears throat> the business that I want to build in the world and the impact I want to create, I have no choice to be a billionaire. So mm. it's not about the money because I had money and I was depressed and, and, and like, you know, people, that's why I coach abundance now. And it's exactly for that reason, because it's wealth, health and spirituality, soul mm. and tribe and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause money is just one of the aspects. It's, it's cool to have money. I'd rather be rich than broke. Don't get me wrong. But the thing is I'd rather get rich doing the things that I love. And, and as soon as something doesn't align and I was doing only fan up to, uh, last month and I just pulled a plug on it and I was making 400,000 a year just with that U S dollar. So it's like, wow, I pulled the plug. I'm like, guys, I'm going to show you that when something doesn't align with me, I'll show you that I don't, I respect what I preach and mm -hmm. I don't mind pulling the plug on that money. And my girlfriend was surprised. She was like, fuck, I, I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, yeah, baby, because I had this thing that it doesn't align with who I am now. And there's never going to be a good timing to pull the plug on $400,000. So I'm like, now that's is hard the time, to do, bro. Respect. That's the only time. So, yeah. <clears throat> and I stopped a, a lot of social media shit and I'm like, now I'm going to be a hundred percent aligned with my brand and I'll teach people how being a hundred percent faith. Cause that's the thing that it's being God, whatever you want it. When you're a hundred percent faith, things will happen for you. And I believe it yeah. and I'll prove mm -hmm. it. And I'll vlog the path of back to a million and it's going to happen next year. So it's, it's like, it's going to be crazy. But the thing is you want to operate out of love and, and pure connection and, and people like you, me and other people like us, we connect and then they, they're going to recognize that in you. So it's yeah, very absolutely. important. Absolutely. And, and that, that thing's super important. It's like the energetics of what you're doing because it could have different incomes. Like it could be different. I was making a lot as a drug dealer, but I was so unhappy. I couldn't go like a minute without being high. Cause it's just like so mm -hmm. readily accessible, but also I was fucking up my dopamine stream. Also, I wasn't helping anybody. I wasn't just, do I wasn't doing anything positive. I wasn't yeah. proud of myself. I didn't trust myself. I didn't have integrity. Mm -hmm. I wasn't healthy. You know, it's just like, this downward spiral. But once I got right with myself and I didn't really focus on money for a while, like I just was a yogi. I was growing a beard. I went hippie vibes and I was really happy. I was that super happy. good for that. That's yeah, it's good for that. Little yeah. scooter. I fucking love yeah. it. Bro. <laughs> Drive a scooter, drink green juice. It was chill. And then I was also a little bit like, wait, are my talents being wasted? You know? And then I saw, okay, wait, I got to be in the world. I can't just like mm -hmm. run away. I got to be in the world and be happy. And that's the practice. Okay. That's can I, I came be back? Yeah. Yeah. Can like, I be effective? <laughs> you know, Happy, that's one thing I remember building. that Dave told me, um, he was like, Oh, I was in pure bliss and meditation, this and that. I'm like, what the fuck do you come back? Like what? He's like, cause I, I need to help people. And I didn't understand at that exact time, but I was like, now I get it. Like when you're escaping, it's so easy, bro. Like you're in Bali, Adistana, you're all those places. It's beautiful. I, I would just disconnect and I would be happy for the rest of my life. I was retired, but I was like, Am I wasting my purpose? What I'm supposed to teach people, I'm not doing it right now. And that's why I came back and I moved to LA and this and that. And OnlyFan was one of the way to finance business and I have the app that now people can train for free on my app and all that shit. It cost $300,000 to build the app and I'm still paying monthly and I'm not making money right now on the app and I'm still paying just so people can train because I believe mm. that it's good karma and all that stuff. And, um, it's like, you need to help people. And I'm happy to see a guy like you that found his way and, um, and can help more people to reach their full potential because that's the key at the end of the day. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah. I like to see other brothers on the path, other sisters on the path. Yeah. And I see us as actually like happier people than people who don't, uh, mm -hmm. help other people. It's just like the secret sauce of like, yeah. learn some shit. Yeah. You got to suffer. You got to hurt, then learn something out of it and then help other people. Like put your, exactly. put your oxygen mask on, do that. And then now help other people put their <clears throat> oxygen mask on. And that's just the yeah. way that we all get out of this alive and happy and okay. I mean, none of us are getting out of this alive, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's a forever thing. It's like, you're not really dying this. I don't believe it. Yeah. Whatever you want to believe guys, I don't believe that it's just the beginning. This is just one part of the thing. And we're all dupe psilocybin. You'll see, you realize it by yourself. Like, we're, we're yeah, so much yeah. higher than this, but the thing yeah. is on this experience that you came to have the five sense of touch feeling so many beautiful experience. Life is 
fucking amazing guys don't ever forget that and the human life comes with a lot of negative emotion that you can make you live and uh, uh, because when you're when you're on like that's high vibration of pure love. There's only pure love. The thing is when you get the roller coaster and tasting and the food and all that stuff, that's when you truly living. That's when the present moment is so key. And that's the beauty of life. And when you understand that, that that's the real deal. And when you have experience like we did, it's just that gets you to the real shit and all the material things is cool. But if you're not living that you're missing so much. And, um, is there any other word you want to say? Um, to end the podcast and you can tell them where they can find you, your Instagram mm-hmm. and all the good stuff. And, um, uh, also I want you to, uh, say your three, your top three book on that note oh, too, to finish the podcast. I love it. I love it. All right. So just to finish it, I'd love to state, make sure you guys reach out, like reach out for people that you strive to want to be like, like I, I'm just a connector. I actually don't tattoo. I own tattoo shops. You know, I don't teach yoga, but we own, you know, Yogi Lab and I don't teach meditation. I just do stuff. And what really got me where I'm at is I find people that I want to hang out with that are doing something that I like and I be their friend and I provide value somehow, some way. And then I learn stuff along the way. And that's how I actually was able to launch seven businesses in seven years was I just know people because I like what they do. And then how do I, how do I do this and get curious, but I reach out and being a leader means initiating those conversations and finding mentors and and finding the help, listening to these podcasts and then reaching out to us and, you know, like doing what you can do to connect to the people that you want to aspire to be like, because that's all we can really do is pass on knowledge and, and seek knowledge in life. We'll be many times we'll be students and teachers. So be both learn some stuff, teach others. And that cyclical energy of taking it in and giving it out, taking it in, giving it out is having you aligned to the universe of what happens in the universe. You know, water becomes rain, you know, clouds and then becomes rain and then waters plants. The cycle of life is that and energetics of life and, and knowledge just passes around. So for us to be in alignment with the universe means giving and sharing and, and receiving. And so if we can do that with knowledge and friends and connections, uh, shit's gonna be cool yeah it's amazing <laughs> that's, that's the way providing value and, and connecting mm-hmm. to people and they yeah become a better become the highest version of yourself so people see it because us mm-hmm. we can see through the fake shit and if you're not connected we're gonna eliminate you for your, from your circle and the good thing is same for you it's like you're like you know who I am so you're like let me connect you with that guy and that guy and that guy because I yeah, you yeah. know that they will love me and same with me I can be yeah. like yo you have Likewise. to meet my boy Aaron. It's like because that's yeah. that's how people that's the real connection. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. So my top three books before where you can find me, I'd say number one, I love Synchro Destiny by Deepak Chopra. I love that book. This is my favorite book he's ever written. That book is so sick. Like what is it? It really I'm gonna, helps. I'm gonna order it right now. Synchro Destiny by Deepak Synchro. Chopra. And it's like Synchro destiny, how the world aligns, how there is no coincidences, how everything comes together to make you who you are. And it's like deeply spiritual. You're going to love this book. I can't wait to talk to you about it. That book, I tell everybody to read it. It's my favorite Deepak book. He's a G. I wish he was my uncle. I wish he was my dad. <laughs> I mean, love you, dad. But Deepak, I'm going to read it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, you'll love it. Um, Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. Dave actually recommended me that one. Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield is an incredible book. I give all my coaching clients that to start with because it'll really help you with the habits of what are amateur habits and what are professional habits. And it's a cool story taught. Each chapter is like one or two pages. So it's super easy to read. It's only like 150 pages. So that's like a good starter book for people. Uh, I like that one, you know? Um, and then the third book, there's so many, like there's just so many good ones, but I would say in the mood I'm in today, I like the business secrets of Trappist monks by August Turak. And it's just cool because it's like a bunch of monks, like, like Christian monks and they're in the States somewhere and they actually create a business worth $30 million because they sell cheese. And it's just like a cool story of like how they built this monastery business and the heart and intention and care and their like monk energy and they like their, their values that they put into their business. And then that blows up because they just put the care into it. So it's a cool story of like religion in a spiritual way. That's not too much. And 
practice and devotion and then business and seeing it mm -hmm. succeed. And so it's just a cool story. I think that's just the mood I'm in today. Like that would be, I think you find value if you want to listen to a cool business yeah. story. That one's entertaining. And then to find me, Instagram is my best channel to, to link me on because I will reply to my DMs. I'm, I'm super approachable. I love meeting people. I love to connect. Mm -hmm. You know, I love to see how I can help. So ink underscore pray underscore love, ink pray love. That's my jam because eat, pray, love changed my life. <laughs> I saw that. That's how I got to Bali. I was like, oh, I want to go to this place. Where is Bali? <laughs> okay, where's yeah, yeah. Indonesia? <laughs> we had to like actually Google it. And uh, my website's www.arambaya.com. Yeah, I'm taking clients for 2023 for personal coaching, brand development, business coaching, life coaching. I love uh, it. Just, man. I love getting people past their, you know, past their trauma, into past their, their shit to learn their transferable skills to then do something with it to actually like actually get in the game and make real results. I love that. That makes me super happy. Uh, like I said, when I was in a wheelchair <laughs> and I could still coach, it meant the world was, to me and it still does. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. This is the same as I do, bro. It's like when you're doing it for the good reason and you have genuine heart and, and not only... Everybody, it's cool. Like people will pay you and the, they pay because a transfer of energy proof to life that you're ready for this. So that's why it's like you have to charge for when you pay, you pay attention. And um, mm -hmm. when you do it for the right reason, you'll find your audience, you'll find your people. So guys, you can make sure you follow him. He's an amazing person. And it was a long ass podcast. I just wanted to flow with you. <laughs> I didn't put a time restriction. We did an hour 20. So guys, if you're still with us awesome. right now, namaste Thank you. and i will see you in another podcast guys thanks for listening i hope that aaron provided tremendous value for you and that you could through this journey of pain and 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 resurrection uh feel what you find uh today so i'll see you in mm -hmm. the next podcast guys